Wow. Joining us now, John Feel and Brian McGuire. Both were 9-11 responders who accompanied John Stewart yesterday. John was a construction supervisor who assisted at Ground Zero and had part of his left foot amputated after a steel beam fell on it. And Brian was a New York City firefighter for 14 years before diminished lung capacity from the toxins he breathed at Ground Zero forced him into retirement in 2013. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Thank you for what you did uh, for this city. We certainly honor you uh, every chance we get. And Brian, I just want to start with you. What was it like to be in that room while Jon Stewart was delivering that impassioned plea on your behalf? Thank you for having us. I appreciate the time. Uh, being in that room yesterday, heartbreaking. Not for me, not for the guy sitting to the left or right of me, but for the people who were speaking yesterday. For example, Detective Lou Alvarez, who is having his 69th cancer chemo treatment today, begging for Congress to help us before we pass away. I was honored to be in that room yesterday and listen to those testimonies of the first responders, of the widow, of the students yesterday who were all suffering worse than we are today. What, what is the cost to Lou, to you, Brian, to bring yourself to Washington to have to beg for this money? We're fighting for those who can't be here to voice their own help and their cause because they are too sick and they are dying. Just last week alone, we had a rough week of 9-11 first responders. We had seven first responders and recovery workers die due to 9-11 cancer. We are here trying to help those families to bring some closure. Mm -hmm. So John, uh, again, we all listened to, to John Stewart yesterday. He's been such a forceful advocate uh, for this cause and I know you guys are all very close to him and thank him. You also have some insight as to how John Stewart got to this point yesterday. Take us behind the scenes from before the hearing, John. Well, again, uh, one, thank you for having me. Uh, big fan. Watch you guys every morning. So uh, humbled. Uh, you know, listen, John's a dear friend of mine. And uh, inside the 9-11 community and outside of the 9-11 community, John and I do a lot of work together. And... Um, over the last several days, John was uh, floundering with a speech. And John still doesn't flounder, trust me. And uh, I said, John, do it from the heart. But John had a, a, a prepared statement. But um, I also knew that uh, Ray Pfeiffer, who is a dear friend of mine and Brian's and John, who passed away two years ago, was uh, so dear to John. When his name was brought up, John would cry. And Ray's golf outing was the other day, and there was a jacket that was being auctioned. And I, and I outbid everybody for that jacket. I made sure it got down to D.C. before John arrived, and I had my team of 40 people sign it. And then um, before John got to D.C., uh, me and John met outside the hill, and we had our uh, 15 minutes of intimacy where we, uh, um, you know, I gave John a, a handwritten letter to get him started uh, on that emotional journey, because I know how John ticks. I know what the 9-11 community mm -hmm. means to this man. And I knew he would be an emotional wreck by the time he got to the guys with the jacket. And um, when he got there, they gave him this jacket. And to see him uh, genuinely cry, um, I knew that John Stewart was going to be in rare form. And um, after that, when we got into the hearing, um, John was looking at the speech and then I uh, whispered in his ear from behind, uh, I was sitting behind him and said, John, did you notice that there aren't many uh, members of Congress in this uh, uh, committee room today? And I said, can you see this one? He's falling asleep. I said, do you see this one? He's on his cell phone. Um, I said, it's disrespectful to those who came down here with cancers that were sitting here and they're not taking this serious enough. And listen, Jerry Nadler does a great job. I love Jerry Nadler. But, um, you know, I've been doing this longer than anybody. And um, I know when I see uh, uh, people that are in, in uh, they're just not sincere. And I didn't, I didn't sense that yesterday. And uh, I think by that time, uh, John Stewart had enough. And uh, John Stewart did what he did best. John Stewart articulated our pain and suffering and our agony over the last 18 years. And John uh, painted a picture for America to see. He painted a landscape 
to let America know that over 95,000 people on the World Trade Center Health Program that are being treated across our great nation are being forgotten by our federal government, by Congress, a dysfunctional body of work who continues to fail us. You know, we have battled these people now for over 15 years. These are the same people that promised to fix yesterday's problems today, maybe tomorrow. And we're tired of it. We don't got to put up with it anymore. They're Congress. They work for us. Anybody who has an issue in America should go to the House that we own, whether it's the Senate or the Congress, and demand that these members work for you. We voted them in. Our taxpayers, uh, we pay their salaries. They work for us. That's my approach. And that's why after 278 trips to D.C., I have zero tolerance for any member of Congress or the Senate. And I hope they don't like me. I don't want them to like me. <laughs> Again, uh, you know, I can listen to you. Uh, talk forever, uh, and, and you, you know you give John Stewart so much praise, but I'm sure he would say that you two and the others that he is helping uh, are the ones who have sacrificed so much and are the ones who have done all the truly important work. John, just quickly, when you looked at that stage and you saw the empty seats, and when you saw, as you say, someone closing their eyes there, how did that make you feel? Not shocked. This is this. <laughs> yeah, we take our work serious. We got in our cars, drove down 95, sat in traffic. Many had to get out, take their medication or rechange an oxygen tank or get in a wheelchair just so they can get to the rest stop, get back in, get back onto the road, get into the D.C. We take everything we do serious. You know, everybody that I bring to D.C., they're not on vacation. Mm -hmm. They're there to advocate for the tens of thousands of people that can't be there. So while we're taking something serious and if Congress does not sense our urgency, mm -hmm and doesn't feel how uh, serious we're taking this, well then, yeah, they're gonna get blasted by somebody like mm -hmm. John Stewart. Kudos to John Stewart. You know what? Mm -hmm. We would not be talking right now mm -hmm. if John Stewart read a prepared statement yesterday. John would have read from a piece of paper like everybody else, and everybody else who testified mm -hmm. did a great job. They did. Let me tell you something, I'm not a crier. I don't cry, and yesterday, I think America got to see me cry a lot. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I don't cry well because I'm, I'm pretty ugly on camera. And no. it, it You're was a very ugly handsome man. For me, You're a very handsome real. man, John. You were a no, very handsome that, man. Listen, that, let, was, that, was some, that was some serious. But, you know, listen, Louis Alvarez is a dear friend yeah. of mine. And Louis is going to die in the near future. And I have to go to another week. I've been to over 180 of these uh, funerals. This is painful. This is sad. Yeah. And um, I'm, 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 I'm tired of listening to excuses of why these men and women, uniform and non-uniform, especially the children of Lower Manhattan, there were 12 schools. Can I ask you, John, what's the, the hold up? What's the hold up? Who, who's, who's standing in the way of you getting this money right now as far as you're concerned? Well, it's you, history will show you 2010, 2015, it was uh, Republican leadership. We just went through the House. We have over 300 co-sponsors. Kudos to my teams that made 12 trips and had about 400 meetings in the last six months. We've kicked butt. But now we're going to go into the Senate where bills go to die because it's run by a bunch of cranky old white men who are trying to keep control of this country. So, I mean, um, Mitch McConnell, we're on our way. Lindsey Graham, we're on our way. You know who we are. We met with you before. We're just not going to take your crap this time. It's John, that simple. John Fears, uh, you know, Brian McGuire, uh, thank you again. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're doing. Let us know how we can help. No, thank, thank you for telling our story, because without you telling our story, this remains a, a, a New York issue. There's 433 out of 435 congressional districts in this country that sent somebody to Ground Zero, the Pentagon, or Shanksville that are affected by 9-11. There are 12,000 mm -hmm. people now with a certified cancer that NIOSH, the federal government, said yes, 9-11 caused your cancer. So thank you, CNN, because you guys took this yesterday and ran it all night. And now you're doing it again today. So thank you. Well, look, thank you. You guys are working very hard on this. And again, please let us know how we can help more. Giant Fears, Brian McGuire, thanks very much for being with us this morning. 
and we are honored to have them as viewers of CNN. Yeah. We are honored that they watch us this morning, and they could never have found a better spokesperson, well, first of all, than those two yeah. gentlemen, but also John Stewart. I mean, obviously, his passion has so aligned with their need, and it just worked to get everyone's attention. Well, how can you not have passion when you listen to John and Brian tell their story, when they talk about how they had to drive down, get out of the car to take their medication, the sacrifices they are making to have to go and beg to get the money that they need. And this problem's not going away. And as they point out, they didn't wait for a second when 9-11 called. They, within five seconds, as John Stewart said, responded.